The purpose of this test was to find out which ground system or counterpoise system worked the best here uh, on 80 meters. So this is uh, what we have outside. It's kind of like our test position and you can see the uh, the RF choke here uh, and this is the uh, the my antennas uh, in-fed half-wave transformer and the rest of it is uh, not being used for this purpose. So here's our coax coming up. It's RG8X. There's about 75 feet of it is laying on the ground and the antenna connects up here and this is the ground post and this is where our coax feeds in. Um, and then we have a picture here of the Corsair 2 which is feeding one watt of RF into this antenna. Uh, it's in the operating position. And this is the uh, the little tablet we used. Um, battery powered of course and it also powers the SDR play here. And uh, we've got a an antenna that's about um, uh, about 18 inches, 19 inches tall. It was originally a two meter whip made to screw into the back of a transceiver. It provided sufficient pickup for us. So we took this unit and put it 150 feet away from the antenna and uh, trying to go any farther than that uh, you run into uh, problems with an unsteady signal uh, for one reason or another and it, it becomes difficult to to read the scale and uh, especially with low power like this. So uh, this is a picture of the S meter and the latest version of um, HD SDR has a very nice uh, dB scale calibrated down to uh, Point uh, in the two point uh, one dB units, so it makes it pretty easy to read. And as you can see here, we are on thirty five oh two kilohertz. So anyway, we installed this in the truck uh, on the back of the truck, one hundred and fifty feet away. And then this let's get a little light here. This is the drawing showing the different systems that we experimented with today. First of all, uh, down here, this is probably the most common system that you will see. Um, the, uh, the box, the transformer box, is just hooked to coax, no ground, and there's your antenna. Now, our antenna is an, an inverted L. Uh, the transformer box is at four feet above ground. The bend in the inverted L is at 55 feet. It slopes down to 30 feet. And here we have some details on the power input and the antenna length. And um, the, uh, the ground system is three eight-foot ground rods. Uh, 100 feet of uh, chicken wire, as it's called, stretched out. Uh, below the grass and um, coax is 75 feet of RG8X laying on the ground. So this system gave us a minus 88 dBs. The next one was uh, coax connected directly to the transformer box and directly grounded to our ground system. Uh, probably the second most common system you'll see out there and highly recommended for lightning protection since the uh, the um, antenna basically is at DC ground potential at all times like this. So uh, that gave us a minus 87.4 so that was um, number three. Number two and down here a little bit. Uh, this system used a counterpoise wire of 94 feet and that um, gave us the ability to run 500 watts on uh, on 80 meters 
and not uh, experience uh, overheating. Now, all systems will get warm, um, but this one actually did the best. Well, the reason is is that it diverts uh, a bit of power off the antenna or off the transformer and spreads it out, puts it out on the counterpoise. So that's, I could do the same thing by reducing my power. Um, but this is one way of doing it. Uh, anyway, we used a choke to uh, isolate the uh, transformer in the antenna so the counterpoise floats above ground. And then we had our uh, ground system connected here on the bottom of the choke. And so the coax shield is also grounded. That gave us a minus 87 uh, dB. And then the last and the best system up here, number one, uh, we had a direct ground to the ground system, the choke, and the coax, and uh, that's, uh, that's what we're using now. This gave us minus 86.4, which is the strongest of the four. So there's, uh, if you look at it, there's, there's considerable difference here, uh, getting close to a couple of dBs of difference. And, of course, the one watt of power is all we were running. Now, uh, the other major thing that I noticed with this system is it did away with the interference that I had from local broadcast stations. The other systems, uh, number two, three, and four, I was getting breakthrough on, on 80 meters with that uh, Corsair and overload. And so somehow, um, strangely enough, uh, well, I'll, I'll take that back. This system also eliminated it. So the two systems with the choke eliminated the broadcast interference. And these systems here, it was really bad. I'm talking about signals showing up S9 to 20 over on 80 meters. Just, it really made the band unusable. And the only way to to get around that was to use a uh, high-pass broadcast filter at the rig. It had a cutoff frequency of 1.8 megahertz. And that would get rid of it. But uh, this do does the job, too. That choke is a, uh, my antennas, it's their, their best one. I forgot the model number. But uh, it seems to have a very high impedance, especially on 80 meters. Very impressive. So there you go. Um, that's my experience. Uh, there's other things that I could have tried, but uh, trying to keep everything consistent uh, this was the best way. The only thing I didn't try uh, here was using a short counterpoise, but I did try that a few days ago. And on 80 meters, a short counterpoise, it makes the SWR a bit higher and uh, the bandwidth a bit more narrow. And this gave us the best overall SWR. Matter of fact, it was a bit astounding. Uh, it was like 1.5 to 1 all the way from 3.5 up to about 3.8 megahertz and then it started to creep up a little bit and um, that is again because this is acting as part of your antenna and it is only seven feet off the ground so that's not really a good place for the antenna so anyway I like this the best it seems to uh, to give us the best performance Thanks for watching in 73.